What kind of women do you like? If you had a computer generate an image, what would she look like? Study the best, but don't forget to play the credit game. What would you say as you're walking up? What's some specifics? Make sure that you get at least relationships with banks. So if you ever need to get approved, then you always got someone you can talk to. Relationships is everything. Is there any state that you find better to live in? Like if you could, if somebody could live anywhere in the U.S., where would you want them to live? It's about the value of your dollars. You yeah. come to California. This is a hundred million dollar house. Yeah, and I don't think they have. Uh, no, in Alabama, you might be able to buy a block, a couple blocks. Yeah, you can live like a king. Yeah, Beverly Hills is a, another level. Here in my garage. All right, welcome to this segment of the show. I got Lawrence here all the way from Alabama. We got questions about what would you do if your wife said she wanted to <laughs> date multiple dudes while she's married to you. We're talking about best way to sue credit reporting companies if they're lying about you, how you started with negative $1,000, how you progressed from doing a $1.6 million car dealership into credit, building credit. And uh, you said something interesting, which was, and I did not know this, is that it's better not to pay off all your credit cards. Better, you said, 7%. Yep. So if you got a $10,000 credit card, never pay it to zero, pay it down to about 500 bucks, and that actually boosts your credit score. You said the worst you've ever seen is a 350 credit score, mm -hmm. and the best you've had is, what did you say, 805? 855. It's posted on my Instagram page. Well, welcome to the show. So we got Lawrence Hicks here. I want to talk. You, you just flew in to Beverly Hills. It's a little different here than Alabama. But you're really from where? Detroit? Pontiac. Yes, Pontiac. I'm in Miss Outside Detroit. So people listening, a lot of people ask me about credit, mm -hmm. the financing stuff, fixing their credit, all that kind of stuff. So let me ask you this question. Going back to the beginning, I like to ask people this. So Lawrence, tell me this, because now you build big businesses, darkest day of your adult life. Tell me about it. Because I tell, I talk about how I was sleeping on a couch in a mobile home in Clayton, North Carolina with $47 in my bank account. No college degree. I had worked on a farm, so I knew how to milk cows, make hay, work with chickens, sheep, horses. But like, I remember being like, I think I lost in life because all my friends had college degrees. That I had a friend making two hundred k at that time. Graduate, he graduated from NC State, and I was like, I was like, I remember thinking, I think I messed up, you know. So, what was that day for you? Did you have one day like that? That's an interesting question. Um, I don't think, probably I remember what my journey was when I came to Alabama. So okay. I had to start there. Okay. Being from Pike, Michigan, being broke always, and then never really learning how you even manage finance, that whole process. So yeah. I remember the police had just kidnapped me because I had a Mercedes. They kidnapped you? Basically, because he made up some fake reason to lock me up. Okay. You know how they say, oh, it smells like marijuana. That's always a start. Yeah. So they get you out of the car. So now he said, oh, I found some. So now they got to impound the car, but it was all, nothing was there. So I ended up had to fight with them, get my car back, but it cost me all of the money I had saved to get down to school to get my master's degree. So you went, you, you moved from Michigan yep. to Alabama to get your master's. What'd you get it in? Business administration and concentration okay. and logistics. Okay. And that I was negative thousand. That's my bank account a negative thousand dollars. So I got a 550 credit score, 22 negative items and bank account a negative thousand dollars. And I'm just going down to Alabama. I don't know one soul down there, but I was playing college basketball. So it's a lot of people in my area, you know, after you play college basketball, then this aspiring pro, but right. they never really make it to the pros. So they just in the hood having babies yeah. and doing everything else. So I was like, you know what? I got to stay involved in something productive. I just go back to school and get my master's degree. I graduated with a 377 GPA. Okay. And so I'm like, all right, I can just go back to school, get a master's degree. I figured out there. So. That whole trip down to Alabama for 10 hours, I just listened to educational videos, educational videos. And the main goal was understanding what the most wealthy do, they leverage credit. So I said, all right, that's the route I'm taking. So I figured out how to fix my credit first. And so with 550, 550, went up to what? What's the highest you've ever had? Uh, 855, I actually posted it on my Instagram. Really? Yep. <laughs> over, <laughs> got over 850. So what's the lowest you've ever seen in anybody? A 300. What's the lowest it goes? I think 250. No, I think 300 is the lowest. What did, I what, are you do to, what do you do to get a 330? What did the guy do? No, he didn't pay nobody back. Oh. <laughs> he had credit, never paid anything ever. Yeah, you could. That's the easiest to get a low credit score. Yeah, but I'm like, 330. I had a friend like that that was either like 380, 400. And I was like, how did you do that, man? It's like, you can't buy nothing. You can't get a car. 
So you took yourself from 550. So did you end up doing that while you were going to college? Yes. Okay. So, okay, you're in college. You start figuring this out. What's the most you made in a year? Like, in the car dealership, our biggest year was two years ago. That was my first million-dollar year with okay. cars. And so did you start your own dealership? Yes. So it was a used dealership? Used, used car dealership. dealership. That's actually an underrated business. I got a friend in North Carolina. He got he did two things, a body shop that makes him like $400,000 a year. Mm -hmm. He bought it. They had Hertz or something. They repaired all Hertz cars at Raleigh Durham Airport. And then he has a little used car dealership that pays him like, he doesn't even work at it in like 10, 20,000 a month he makes. So you did a million. How much does it, I've always been like, how much does it cost to start car dealership? Did you finance the cars? That's another unique thing I teach in my mentorship program. Okay. The get the floor plans. Because a lot of times you think, how do these dealers get these cars? I mean, yeah. You know, when I first started, I was using my cash, about $30,000 cash I built up, but it was liquidating credit cards after I figured out the credit game. Okay. And then once I talked to other dealers, I'm like, how are y'all getting this? Like, oh, we get floor plans. So you just go to the bank, they check your score. You can qualify like 600 credit score, and they'll give you fifty, hundred thousand, four hundred thousand dollars $400,000 just to purchase cars. Oh. And then you can use that. So I say, yeah, my uncle, the guy who told me, when I when I told you I had $47 in my bank account, my uncle was visiting, and I was like, what do I do? Like, I don't know. I don't have a degree. I don't have, and he goes, learn to sell. And I sell, sell what? He said, sell insurance or sell cars? And he had sold cars. And I went down, he worked at Carry Motors. And I went down there to Carry Motors, and I was like, I don't want to work here. Because he was working from like 8 in the morning to 10 at night. And he's like, don't do this. So that's why I picked insurance to start out with. So, But owning a dealership is different. Then you got other people selling. So how many salespeople were selling for you? Or were you just doing it yourself? Yes, I had most I ever had was three employees, but the retention on employees is crazy. Cause, really? Because it's all commission. Yeah. It's just, you know, good help is always hard to find. And it was just getting people in. Don't get, say that, though. You jinx yourself. You're right. Well. It's, For most people. Yeah, it's it's a task. If you can do it, then of it course. It takes IQ. You got to <laughs> think harder. It's not, it's. It takes more IQ. It takes, it's like more horsepower, you know? So you had the dealership. You did a mill. Do you still have it? Or you it still was it? really like 1.7. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But what's the margins on that? You do 1.7 on a used car dealership. Where do you end up making? It depends because, like, I specialize in foreign luxury. So, like, okay. 15000 and under. Okay. Porsches, Maserati, Bentley. The Bentleys were up there, like, 30000 Porsches up there, like, 30000 And the Range Rovers. So you can make from my... Minimum, I used to try to at least get a thousand dollars, but some I could make five thousand, seven thousand. So I would say, seven. You were bit. selling Porsches for thirty k. Yeah, the Panameras, the oh. four door Porsches. Yeah, those so are these are like super depreciated used cars. It was only that was what a twenty fourteen or twenty twelve. So they like really? five to yeah. eight years old. So yeah. not too old. Okay. And so your goal, so your mark, so if you do one point five million, what'd you end up netting? Like two hundred grand, something like that? No, like a little bit over three hundred. Okay. Yeah, after that, because the overhead is is crazy. That's yeah. another reason why. But still, you're at like twenty five percent. People don't realize the most profitable company in the world is Visa, Mastercard, and they're at fifty one percent net margins. That means after everything tax. But Apple and Louis Vuitton, they're around twenty eight percent. So people don't realize at scale, margins shrink because you need to hire a team. You can't do it all yourself. So if you were doing 1.6 million net and 300,000, you're at 10, 20% margins, you know, 15. It's not that bad. But do you still have that or you shut that down? Nope. It was like you said, like the guy, I was telling him the story the other day. You waking up at 3, 4, 5 yeah. in the morning, you driving 3, 4 hours to the auction, then you working 2, oh, 3 so hours. Buying everything at all. Yeah, yeah, and then you got to inspect the cars, and yeah. then you got to go to the auction. That's two, three hours. Then you got to drive back a couple hours. Then the day starts. After you did all of that work. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. It, Where are the auctions? Just depends. Like, you look them up. It's always dealer auction. You know, you got to register in. So, like, in Alabama, we had one down the street in Athens, and then I would have to drive up to Nashville, drive yeah. down to Birmingham, or we drive to Atlanta. Okay. So, next, but I, like, I got questions I like to ask everybody because it's interesting. Everybody in the world got a slightly different take. So, your hardest day was... Being falsely arrested, no money, no credit, negative money. So let me ask you the second question. If today was your last day on Earth because you're going on Elon Musk's spaceship to Mars, you got kids? 
I don't. Okay. For your future kids and grandkids, let's say there was one you didn't know about, okay? Or or you had one in the hopper, right? And you had one simple thing to leave your kids, but like specific, not like life philosophy, like super specific, like build a Facebook funnel, da 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 da, or like, what would you tell somebody for financial advice? How would you sum up the most specific? It doesn't have to be all encompassing. What What's the most specific advice you have for your kids and grandkids to make money? I would just tell them to study the best it is. If you look at yourself as being the best, start at the best. Yeah. And go from there because you really can't lose. But you teach credit. Would you tell them the credit game? Of course. So what would you tell them about credit? You're walking onto the spaceship. Mm-hmm. So you only got like a minute to talk to them. And you're looking back and you're like, Study the best, but don't forget to play the credit game. What would you say as you're walking up? What's some specifics? Make sure that you get at least relationships with banks. So if you ever need to get approved and you always got someone you can talk to, relationships is everything. Okay. And then also making sure you understand to build your credit, make sure you get some loans, making sure you're getting credit limit increases, making sure you got good solid limits. So when you go and ask somebody something, you don't just look rinky dink because you got a 500 or a thousand dollar credit card you have for five years right so just so get the limits so like get yourself a, how big of a card what's re- realistic for most entrepreneurs it's different ways you can go about this now it's funny you asked me that it's a hack so let's say you a person you a high net income individual but you haven't used credit you say you know what? i just make money spend cash yeah but you can secure a card most people start with 500 dollars. Yeah. but if you got 20 grand sitting somewhere you can go get two secure cards and then a secure loan and so now six to eight months, you build a history, then you apply for unsecured at that same bank, or you can go to Chase, American Express, and they go on what they call comparable credit. So they're gonna give you a limit like that or higher. Okay. So wherever you start yourself is where they gonna start you. So it's better to start yourself at a higher up limit. Yeah, so if somebody has some cash, use it to jumpstart. Yeah. What's the most credit you've seen somebody have? Open credit lines. Myself. Uh, well, your students, like you help people. What have you gotten the, the highest up? Um, about three hundred thousand. We just went through one. Then we actually got one we was working on today. She already up at one hundred nine thousand, but we not even done yet. What she start at? No, this is what we got for her already. Oh, an extra hundred nine thousand. Yep, all zero percent interest too. The huh. cheapest money out. Do you know? When I think cards, I got a friend. He traveled all during twenty twenty quarantine. All this. Just off points. He's like the master. That's how I got here. Points. That's how I travel. You traveled here? Oh, Beverly Point. Hills. Yeah, I, that's what I teach too. So is this free? The free trip? trip? Yeah, yeah. Hotel? No, you can't. They don't got them in the book. The, um, the Beverly Hills Hotel, does it? Yeah, they, they, don't, they ain't in the, you know, it's Marriott. Yeah. Or America, yeah, they don't got them in the yeah. points. So it's the, yeah, yeah. But with the, so yeah. how many flights can you take before you have to actually spend your own money? Right now, I probably could take about six still, but I'm yeah. spending money always. So by the time you get to run out, you didn't spend enough money and yeah. built up points again. So what car do you like the most for that? American Express, because you yep. get access to the Amex Lounge, and then yeah. you can go in there and eat for free, too. So yeah. you're saving, saving, saving. Right, right. Yeah. My friend likes, I think he likes the, what is it, a Providian? The, uh, I'll remember the card he likes. Is it an airline card? No, it's like a Chase Providian. Oh, no, the Chase Prevert, yeah. we got that one, too. Yeah. That's one or other one recommended, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He has that one. I use the Amex one. My team does it for me, but. Sometimes the other day I was like telling my team, I'm like, are you using all the points I have? And they're like, no. I'm like, use the points. I was in Helsinki, Finland, got the best hotel. The whole thing was free. I'm like, how many points, millions of points do I have? And you forgot to spend them. So yeah, it's like, you can end up at good hotels for free. Somebody told me, I don't know if you've seen this. I saw, there's so much stuff online now that I'm like, is this stuff even true? One dude was talking about how he buys points. There's websites you can buy hotel points, buy airlines. I don't know if it violates the airline terms, but he's like, I can buy a thousand dollar worth of hotel room for like four hundred bucks from somebody who's reselling them. I don't know if you've ever seen that, but yeah, you can buy points. Yeah, but he's like, he just does the math. He's like, he buys a, he wants a thousand dollar room. He goes on buys for four hundred dollars a thousand dollars worth of points at that at like Marriott or whatever. Mm-hmm. Probably works until Marriott finds out about it, but. You don't, I don't tell know why Marriott doesn't let people transfer. I, the reason I think they don't is they hope you forget about them. Probably. They hope you're like me and they're like, ah, this guy's got a million points, forgot to use them or whatever I have. So the interesting thing we were talking about, the other thing 
you were saying, I didn't even realize you can do this. So you're saying if the credit bureaus and give you your credit score, the reporting agencies, mm-hmm. if it's a mistake, you can sue them and get money back? And let's be clear, the credit reporting agencies is just a credit report. It's actually not the score. That's FICO, Vantage, all of them over here. So okay. we want to make that distinction first. Okay. Credit report is different than the score. Okay. Credit report nations is responsible for the report. So, you know, they got the FCRA, for okay. Credit Report Act, basically giving them, hey, credit reports need to be set up this way and it needs to be accurate to keep the integrity of our banking system. Okay. So now you say, all right, well, let me pull my credit report and see if, see if it's accurate. Yes. And if it's not accurate and they don't fix it, then yes, you can sue them. What's the most you've ever gotten for somebody? Just lately, we just got 5500 in a settlement. Okay. So it just you just try to get small amounts for your account. But it's yeah. really to get the accounts deleted because that's really the inaccurate reporting. But the So the suing, the money you get is not the big deal. It's like, hey, you're lying about me. Clean up my report because it's negatively affecting me. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm going to pull mine. I need to pull mine and go through it and be like, hey, I'm going to call my CFO and be like. I got a video for you too. Okay. Free video to teach you how to go through there and check okay. it out too. Good. I'm going to put, by the way, everybody watching, I'm going to put the the show notes with the link to his you're gonna put a video we're gonna put a video on there tylopez.com slash lawrence l-a-w-r-e-n-c-e so if you want to see the show notes or put some of the stuff you're talking about the credit card you recommend the agencies the way to get because i i've seen people's lives ruined i had a couple years ago i used to live across the street i'm back here in beverly hills across the street from where i was and I had an alert. I used those alerts. Uh-huh. Somebody was trying to buy a house in my name. The bank called me. Hey, are you trying to buy, take out a $500,000 mortgage in Van Nuys or something? I'm like, nope. They're like, well, we're glad we called you because somebody got a hold. So do you recommend people pay that 50 bucks a month to one of those agencies that monitors your credit? Yeah, I think credit monitoring is useful. Yeah, you paying fifty dollars, you paying too much. But maybe I'm not paying fifty. But it's <laughs> like, what should it be like? Twenty bucks or something? It's like twenty nine, thirty dollars yeah, somewhere yeah. around there. Yeah, probably. It's I'm one of the guys that's like, you can get me if you have three price points and one's the premium. I'm like, okay, I need that. That's me all the day long. Yeah, I get yeah. that. A guy once told me in the psychology, twenty percent of people just automatically scroll to the most expensive option and f- and just assume it's worth the money. Not 80%, 20 but, but I'm that dude, so it's probably why I'm paying 50. I probably get some special feature I don't need. Do you have any recommendations on which tr- credit monitoring? I think I used, let me just look. I'll look up on my email here. Identity IQ. You actually got a referral link. I can- Identity IQ? Mm-hmm. And I'm actually in the process of getting my own credit repair company, so. Okay. Let me worry, re- re- credit monitoring. Yeah, credit. Let me see which one I use. Credit. And you can get Vantage and FICO on there. You know, some people. Mine is, okay, let me put in the word credit. Credit. I think I use, I think I actually use Equa. I want to know who charged me $50. I'm about to find out. I'm about to save money off this damn call. The most you should be paying like $29.99, $35, but that's if you're getting the million dollar identity theft protection and all of the other things. Man, Gmail, some of these companies, I don't know why they're making it so hard for me to scroll through here. Anytime I don't want to get, anytime I don't want to, I'll figure it out. I'm pretty sure it's, yeah. I've, I have think I, at one point I had two. Then I'm really wasting my money. I had two different ones. I'm like, Shh. Bank of America used to offer it, you know? Don't but, take the ones from the bank. No. Staying real. That's no. funky dink. What about locking your credit? Some people said, hey, Ty, if somebody tried to buy a house in your name, the solution is, lock it mm-hmm. so that it's not easy to use. Do you recommend that to people? Sure. Yeah. yeah, that's protection. They got either what they call a security freeze. You can do that and it'll lift it for a period of time or okay. you can put what they call an identity theft alert on there. Okay. And just like they did when somebody tried to apply, they're going to call you first. Yeah, that's what I think I have. That's, that must be why I'm paying the 50. So if somebody has, what about if somebody has something legitimate? Somebody's listening. They didn't pay a bill, doom, doom, doom. Does it have to sit on there for five years or three years or seven years? Or are there ways to come in there and dispute and get it knocked off? Yes, that's exactly what we're talking about. Because the good counts, you know, we don't we don't care if those ain't reported accurately. Because right. that's one thing I would do want to talk Those are the ones you hope, Josh, report inaccurately, yeah. But one caution to people, though, if you dispute that account and it's reported, they do have a chance to delete it. So it's leave positive accounts alone. But. Yes. Negative accounts, you're looking for the errors, and yeah, you can definitely get it. So you can basically, 
if there's a little loophole, they got to delete the whole thing. Yeah, or it's not a loophole. That's their law. They say, hey, look, it either has to, it can be incomplete or it can be inaccurate. Okay. So if you look in and you go through this, so let's say you've been So give me an payment. example. What's an example that you've seen with one of the people in your program? You pull your credit report. Okay. You look on there. You're like, hey, I made a payment in July, but it's a dash right here. And then you go over there. You're like, I paid $150 and paid this off. They say I paid, but it got zero payment right here. It's like, this is not depicting the story. And it's not, oh. it's confusing me. And I was there. So it's like, all right. So even if they miss one payment, one amount, you can basically get, they got to take the whole thing away. Is that the idea? Let's do it this way. Okay. If you tell me you want 10 things and I bring you nine, did I, is it accurate if right. I bring you nine? Right, right. So you basically use the Fair Credit Law Act that if it's not perfect, you either get money back, like you said, mm -hmm. with the lawsuit, or what do they do? Do they just fix it and say, we're still going to, still going to mess up your credit or they actually, it just falls off. Unfortunately, yeah. they never really care to fix it. Like in all of my years, I've been doing this 13 years. I've never seen them fix it to perfect. Okay. They'll try, but they'll mess it up more. They remove stuff. So it's basically, you give them a chance, you dispute it. You say, all right, look, this is wrong. You can either fix it or delete it. So we always give them that chance. They don't fix it. So they mess it up more. So now it's the conversation about deleting it because the fair credit report next says if it's incomplete, and it's inaccurate, you either need to fix it or you need to delete it. So okay. if we dispute it, and now you know it's inaccurate, and yeah. you don't do a proper investigation, then now the conversation about deleting it. But they like to ignore you or do game, but remember, the top is not the bottom. So that's like you, the owner, the worker usually is not carrying out your orders right. 100%. Right, right. So little stuff is happening in there. Yeah. So now when you go to court, you sue them, they pull up, they're like, oh, dang, we did this. We did All right, um, what can we do? But when you say sue, are you literally showing up at court and they're showing up? That's why uh, my book is called Without Going to Court or Using Any Laws. Okay. So when you file the lawsuit, yeah, it's about now getting them on the phone because if you know you're wrong and the evidence is there, then it's really about why would I go to court and humiliate right. myself? It's a waste of time. So I can talk to you about, hey, well, what can we do to settle this? Gotcha. So you basically, they don't ever show up to court if you're clearly correct. Yeah. If not, it's a conversation. So, you know, when you file paperwork, and I teach it in my book, when they reach out to, they give you correspondence. You can reach out to them to have the conversation, save them some yeah. time. But in, it's in their best interest to contact you and say, hey, what can we do? So that's usually a call they put into you or email and say, hey, look. So they reach out to do. you first, like, hey, that's not the legal department. Yeah, you know, yeah. most it's it costs to go to court. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, usually they're not going to go to court, especially if they know they're wrong. Now, you were talking about earlier, if you're going to space, you're leaving your grandkids, a message would be get relationships with banks. Are you talking about bank banks, like the Chase, the City, the local credit bureaus, or are you more talking about credit cards like Amex? Same thing, because they're yeah. still a bank. They're going to yeah. service them, but it's so like prime example. I got my banker at home, though. Okay. If I send someone to them, they already got a relationship, so now it has to be to my building, and then he can tell you what requirements are. So you're like, all right, what do I need to open a, to get a credit card at this bank? I need to open this account. I need to put this amount of money in. But it's like, all right, don't worry about nothing. Just go to my guy. So gotcha. now, and then now I'm out of town. If I need something, instead of a regular person that don't have a channel in the bank, I just send him an email or just pick up the right. phone and call him. Look, I need this. So I build just, a relationship with a personal banker. For gotcha. sure. Any banks you like, the local or national ones? Of course, Chase is the big dog right now. They're giving yeah. people up to $75,000, 0% interest on one credit card. And they got two of them at 0% interest. So you got a high credit score. You can get 150 grand, 0% interest at one bank with one inquiry. Huh. So 70, what do you need? What do you consider high credit score? What's it? What do you need to get that? The person that we're dealing with now, she got an 803, 790, but it's a strong credit report because yep. she got credit cards on there. She got cars that's paid off. Yes. She got a house that's paid off. So it's like, this is a stronger versus someone with an 800 credit score. And they may got two cars that they just got six right. months ago. So you basically, you're saying you got to delineate, you've got a credit score. Mm -hmm. You can have a high credit score, but when they look at the report, or mm -hmm. it's not strong enough because maybe you just have one car and one little credit card. Mm -hmm. So yes, you're good at paying it off, but they've never seen you with a lot of responsibility. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So is it better to have a huge portfolio of open lines and a 750 or an 800 with a rinky dink amount of accounts? Open with 750 all day long. Really? What about open with 700? Hey, the score, remember, I'll tell you a story real quick. That's okay. when you asked me that. I was learning this credit game, and they got a thing called authorized use where you can basically piggyback. You got good credit. Your history going to go on my credit report. 
Okay. So now it boosts my score. Okay. I had a 797. I'm thinking, all right, I'm ready to go into the bank. I'm getting denied. My roommate, I was dealing with a woman at a time. We chose the room while we were in grad school. So she had like a 680. So I'm getting denied or I'm getting approved for a thousand dollars. She applied and getting proof for nine thousand. So she get nine times more than me and my score is over a hundred points higher. Huh. I got the thing report. She has the history. Gotcha. So the credit, so people that don't know what they're doing, put all the emphasis on the score, the 300 to 800 score, mm -hmm. when actually it's the totality. Mm -hmm. So really, should people be like buying three cars <laughs> just to open up? Should they be co-signing on somebody's car? Does co-signing help? Does that count as an open account? I never recommend that because yeah. co-signing is what they consider a joint account. But okay. then to take responsibility for somebody else, oh yeah, like a tough thing. My my friend Zach, I will never forget when he co-signed for this woman that I know in North Carolina. I was like, Zach, I never like, recommend. He's like, I think she likes me. I'm like, ah, this ain't gonna end well. Sure enough, she it it, it was like Range Rover. He co-signed for it. And it like was the bane of his existence. She ended up just dumping it. She, he had to just keep paying it. She was what happened. <laughs> yeah. But I'm saying, what if you co-sign for somebody you're going to pay anyway? Like, let's say. Get it in their name. Your mom. Get it get in their name. Put it in their name. Help her build credit. Or just put it in your name. If you're going to pay for yeah, it. Yeah, then you might as well just put it in. Oh, but if you're going to pay for it yourself, then yeah, co-sign and help them. Yeah, yeah that's what? what I'm saying. If you're already going to pay for your mom, like I pay for my mom's stuff. I'm already going to pay for it. I should probably co-sign because yeah. then it shows up. It helps her. Yeah, it hel and it helps me too, right? Yeah. Because yeah. it shows I have another line open. Mm -hmm. And also, yeah. if you co-sign them for it, then it says she may not have strong enough credit to stand yeah. on her own. So I would invest some money with someone like me to yeah. help you put her in position. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you have a program that basically, what is it, a one-year program, a six-month program? You coach people? Mm -hmm. yeah. It's a family though, so we don't give them a duration. You come in, you part of the family, so okay. it's no one year or anything. You part okay. of the family. Okay. So the idea is, is the average person coming to you pretty horrible credits up front, or are these more advanced people that just want to supercharge their credit? The average person, my ideal client, is someone that's generating income, but they don't understand the credit game. So maybe they just been spending cash and they yeah. just left credit alone because of the frustration to deal with it, yeah. or maybe they got good credit but don't know how to maximize their situation. They still got low limits. They only had one or two accounts open. They're yeah. getting denied for things. They're like, I pay my bills on time. Why am I getting denied? Right. So just to really understand, hey, look, this is how you do this. What are you trying to accomplish? Let's get you there. Yeah. So what about somebody with, like somebody who has, forget credit cards, but home equity lines, things like that. Mm -hmm. Are you a big fan of people opening that up? It just depends like, on what your intent is. But just to help the credit, not just the score, but the actual credit report look better. Like, oh, this person has a million dollars open on a home. They're not even using it. Because I know utilization rate matters. Mm -hmm. What do you want your utilization rate usually to be? Like under 50%? 30. Under 30%. Under so 30. 30 is like the bare minimum to get approved under 30. But if we're talking about ideal for the purpose yeah. score. Under seven percent, really, and then here's a, a unique thing, and you should try it too. Okay, you got you will have a lower credit score from zero on out your credit cards than leaving like a smaller balance. Right, so leave a small balance it's under seven percent. Under so if you have a hundred thousand dollar card, leave seven k always on it at least. Day, or, yeah, 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 something to just yeah. to play with the algorithm. So paying it to zero, they don't like. Nope. Remember, it's a debt system. Yeah, yeah, because they want to loan to people who pay back but not too much so they can keep charging you 20. What's the maximum they can charge? It's like crazy. I think 28% or something. And you know, they call it usury. Usury yeah. is state to state wide. Yeah. A lot of people aren't aware of that. So you have to look up your state and yeah, see yeah, what California state. probably has the most. Let's ask chat. I like to do a little chat GPT. Let's see. What is the state in the United States, chat GPT? You're on my podcast here. What's the state that has the lowest and the highest credit card usury percentages? She probably ain't going to interpret that. Should just ask their interest rates. Let's see. No, that's smart. It don't know exactly. Arkansas has the lowest credit card usury cap at 17. South Dakota has no usury cap on credit cards, and they're doing 36%. So don't get a South Dakota. If you don't like somebody, be like, hey, man, here's a link to a South Dakota. <laughs> why don't you move to South Dakota and open up some cards? I wonder why. I would have thought California's not in there. I swear California. Yeah, but 
Arkansas's max 17. That's interesting. I didn't know that. Oh, no. It says here California can be is as low as 10%. It says it operates differently compared to states like Arkansas and South Dakota. California's usury law caps interest rates on general loans at 10%. However, credit card, they avoid this because they operate under federal law. So what's the federal law? So basically, you can't charge more than 10% on generalized loans, but the credit card companies figure out how to get that. This practice is upheld by the Marquette National Bank of Minneapolis versus First of Omaha Service Corp. decision in 1978. It allows national banks to export the interest rate rules from the state where the bank is headquartered. Sneaky. You put enough lawyers together, they're like, okay, there's laws on how much we can charge, but we will... Uh, We'll get around the laws. So, by the way, is there any state that you find better to live in? Like, if you could, if somebody could live anywhere in the U.S., where would you want them to live? Well, you know, matter? where I currently reside, Huntsville, Alabama, was voted the number one best city to live in in America. But, per, but not for credit, right? You said, well, no, just because cost of living. It yeah, yeah. It's about the value of your dollars. You yeah. come to California. Oh, yeah. You probably Tell not get about it. This is an expensive place to live right here. Yeah, you probably not gonna get like they probably don't even have a house like this in Alabama to buy. No. <laughs> they probably don't even. This is a uh, this is a hundred million dollar house. Yeah, and I don't think they have um, no. In it, Alabama, you might be able to buy a block, a couple blocks. Yeah, you can live like a king. Yeah, Beverly Hills is a, another level. You know what I mean? But I, that's funny. That's something I wanted to ask you too. I'm still trying to figure it out because I need to move. I'm a single guy. Yeah, and I need to. I need to move out of that area. I don't think it's the place. So, so what's the goal? Health, wealth, love, or happiness? What are you moving for? Well. You said a single guy. You're trying to find love, family. I was, that's why I say, I wanted to group that into happiness because that's what I feel like that's the only thing I'm missing, basically. So you're missing love. So uh, what kind of women do you like? If you had a computer generate an image, what would she look like? All right, there you go, ask me. Blonde, brunette, Latina, uh, Asian. I love, my, I love my sisters. Okay. M more that cater to the um, are the brown because I like Latin. So like Dominicans. Yeah, yeah. They so you get Afro and Spanish. You get the African Spanish. You yeah, need a red bone sister that speaks Spanish. Yeah, like, okay. <laughs> you probably you might need to be in Florida. You might need to be in Florida. My friend who likes Latinas, he's like he's married and he's like. I went to Miami, and he's like, I cannot go to Miami. That's my favorite. He's like, my wife's going to divorce me. Just He's like, I can't even stop looking. He's like, even though she's there, he's like, it's, it's too much temptation. <laughs> so he's like, I do not go to Miami. I don't go with my wife. I'm going to go without her. He's like, I'm happier when I don't think Miami exists. So, but that's opposite for you because you don't have a wife and you don't have a girlfriend. But them ain't the type of, cause, and I yeah. don't like fake bodies though. So that's the thing. I don't want the. Go to Orlando because or Miami is more fake because you got all the OnlyFans reconstructed. Mm -hmm. But Orlando's like Puerto Rican. Do you know that's the number one place I was thinking about moving? There you go. That's, that's fine. fine. You, you just come. Orlando's like Puerto Rican and it's not as Miami. So there's not so much surgery there. Yeah. Puerto Rico too. What about Dominican? Now, out the country, I haven't been yet, so, you know, that's different. you never been out of the country? Oh, no, I've been to out the country, Cancun, yeah. Jamaica, and then uh, Turks and Caicos. So, you but. You do Dominican. Costa, look, here's the thing. If it was me, I live in different places. I got a farm on the East Coast. I live part-time, not full-time in California. I live in Scandinavia, Sweden, Denmark. If it was me, I would not set myself up 100% in the U.S. Mm -hmm. Because the U.S. is great for business, but it's not as good for love and social life. Americans are busy, man. I was just Googling. I was actually asking ChatGPT the countries that work the least and the most. The least is Germany, Denmark, Sweden. They work on average like five to six hours a day. What works? Who works the most? Korea and the U.S. Mm. Taiwan. So no work. I mean, all work and no play makes Johnny a dull boy. So if you like spend a little time in Dominican, it's cheap. Go where in Dominican? Dominican, bro, I just go into the capital, Panama, Costa Rica. Did you like Mexico? Uh, yeah, I went to Cancun. Yeah, I yeah, like but that's a little more touristy. Yeah, we was on a resort, but we toured through the city and yeah. got our city feel in. But try Orlando. I like that's. I was like that. It was Orlando or Dallas. I had Cancun. no, not Dallas. Never Texas. Why? Why you say everybody? <laughs> gets unhealthy when they go to Texas. I'm serious. Like, Texas is an unhealthy place. I know 
look, my mom was born in Texas, so I have respect for Texas. If it wasn't for Texas, I wouldn't be here. But I do not like Texas. Especially if you're going to go to Texas, go to Austin. Mm. Dallas, I don't like cities that are 100% built that you can't walk anywhere. People are taking their car to get their mail. It's set up like it's insane. Doubt Nobody walks anywhere. Uh, nobody walks in Dallas. I, I stay downtown in Dallas. It's weird when I walk. It's like overpasses. It's like dangerous to walk. Say what you want about L.A., Beverly Hills. You can walk. I can walk to downtown Beverly Hills. I can walk to West Hollywood. It's like 20, 30-minute walk. You stay healthy. Everybody I know goes to Texas. I had a guy from Sweden move there, one of my CTOs. Healthiest dude. I met him in Texas. Oh, I'm so happy to be here. I'm going to love this place. Nine months later, he had a weird lung infection. He's a big guy. He, he gained 75 pounds. He's like, I'll never. I was like, I told you. I told him. I hate to say I told you so, but I will if I need to. And I told you on day one, nothing. He was trying to walk around Dallas, almost getting hit by cars. You know, it's just nobody walks. So I would I would stay away. No, I would go to Orlando. I, 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 I wouldn't personally live in Orlando, but if I had a choice between Dallas and Orlando, I'm straight landing in Orlando. Why are you into Orlando? I don't like Florida much. It's too humid and hot. It's okay. People, it's got no taxes, you know. What about Tennessee is right near you? I went to school, uh, Lane College in okay, Jackson, So you're done with Tennessee. No, nah, and Nashville is kind of, that ain't my speed. Yeah. And then, of course, there ain't nothing in Memphis. Brazil's a cool place. I love Sao Paulo, Brazil. I need to go there. I got an Uber. I do jujitsu. I went to... There's a guy named Minotaro Noguera. He's like a heavyweight champion for him. He has a gym there. I went to, from my hotel in Brooklyn, this is Brazil, not New York, to his place. Then I forgot something. My assistant went back to the hotel, came back, and it was $4.85 for her to go back to income. And it was like a 25-minute ride. That's pretty good. In L.A., if you call an Uber... And he takes you to your next door neighbor. It's ninety three dollars and fourteen cents with all the surcharges. So like Brazil is cheap, and it's on the same time zone as the East Coast. Brazil is good. E amazing places, a thousand bucks a month. Amazing nine hundred. The average you can have a great a chef is about three fifty a month, full time, four hundred maybe. Now you got me one. I'm six hundred maybe. You want to be the highest paying employer out there you could have sometimes i do the math of what i spend to be in the u.s i'm like i gotta have 250 assistants i gotta have one person that just shines shoes only that i know this sounds horrible so everybody listening this sounds very capitalistic pig but i was just doing the math i was like i have one person who just makes smoothies that's their one job it's a nice relaxed job i'm not pushing them they work three hours a day i pay them full time all they got to do is go to the farmer's market, pick me the freshest mango, the freshest, like, make me a fresh, three fresh steaks a day. No, if you don't have, look, America is a place you come for wealth, wealth, wealth. If that's not important to you or you've already done that, don't be here all the time. The best, I would get a farm. I like farms in America. Farmland. You use your credit to buy a farm. You can buy a farm on a credit card. Pow. I saw a guy who buys multifamily apartments. Oh, he figured out a way to do it on a credit card. Oh, like a million dollar apartment complex. You can liquidate the credit card. Yeah, so that's easy. Yeah, yeah. I think he, I think he literally, the buyer agreed. I guess they had a processing on Stripe or something. The buyer agreed that he could use his card. So he just, maybe they had a merchant processing bit type. Yeah, that's business. all it takes. Yeah. He, they owned a restaurant. He walked in and swiped his card, and they're like, "Well, okay, you get my apartment." Yeah, it's 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 pretty crazy, but. You know, let me ask you this as we kind of wrap up here. If you knew one thing, that the world as we know it was going to fall apart, okay? What's your backup business? Because you've got a coaching business. We'll put a link, tylopez.com slash Lawrence. Um, but what's the, I always tell people, you got to have a backup business. What's the backup business? Right now, I just uh, uh, Orlando Salsa Club? AI. Okay. So I actually just started doing that. You should do an AI credit. So it like uses AI. I'm about to build my own software. Everything okay. I'm yeah. telling you, I'm yeah. putting in the software. So I'm actually, that is the next big thing. That'd be cool because it could basically think through. It could write the letters for you. Yep. 
That's exactly what it's going to do. They optimize this, pay down this credit a little bit, but not this one. And like da 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 da. And then you just like, you just fucking, you have it. You know what I mean? Yeah. That would be cool. I think AI. So AI, what happens if electricity goes out? What's the plan? So five. Let me just ask ChatGPT. That's a good question. Let me ask ChatGPT. ChatGPT, you're on my podcast, so make sure you're you're wearing your best clothing, looking your best. Um, give me the percent chance that electricity goes out in the United States and Europe for a month straight in the next 10 years. Give me the 1% to 100% chance. Let's see. It says U.S. 1% to 5%, Europe 1% to 3%. That's higher than you think. Five. I mean, it's a possibility. Dude, people, most people. So let me ask you. you ain't gonna be- if that happened, the 5%, America goes without power for 30 days. Give me a, and let's assume there's three, just let's round down to 300 million Americans. How many Americans would you expect to be dead one way or another through riots, starvation, attacks, crime, so on and so forth, freaking out, heart attacks, no air conditioning? How many people would die in that 30 days, in that worst case, a low percentage chance? Just guesstimate out of 300 million. This is why I tell people have a backup business and then a real backup. Estimated toll. At least it says one to ten million people. That's not bad. Ten million <laughs> out of three hundred and thirty. And you got to remember. Okay, let's think about Vietnam War was what fifty cow. How many died? Was it how many died in all of the last twenty years in the Middle East? How many soldiers died? And how many died in Vietnam? And how many Americans died in World War One and World War Two? Now let's put this in perspective. Remember, this is ChatGPT. It might be wrong. U.S. military deaths in the last 20 years is 7,000 people. That's pretty Only 7,000. Vietnam, 58,000. That's in the 1950s to 1970s, late 1950s. World War I, 116,000. World War I, two, 405. So this means 30 days with no power. You might lose 10 times more than we've lost in all the wars in a century. So I tell people, do you have water? Learn from the Mormons. Have water in the basement. Probably need some guns <laughs> with bullets to make sure you get to keep your water. Number two, learn from the Amish. Get a little piece of land. That's why I say you, you should keep a little piece of farmland where you are now. Then you got the Orlando as your city life and Dominicans your, and you just rotate around. A month mm-hmm. any, I like that the most. I like a travel rotation. Like I'm here in Beverly Hills, but I'm going back to my my farm in Virginia. I'll, I'm going there next Tuesday or Wednesday. So I, I like that rotation life because every place has pros and cons. Mm-hmm. So people ask me, what's the best place? I'm like, well, by very nature of humans having broad appetites, there would never be one place that is so good. It encompasses everything you want. You're going to get there to Orlando. You're going to miss something about Alabama. You go to Brazil or Dominican, you're like, oh, I love some place, but then you're going to be there like, ah, oh, man, this place is a little bit too crazy for me, you know? So mm-hmm. rotate. You make money. It's time for you to start the Lawrence rotation. And then you just pick your, I call it your travel circadian rhythm. Mm-hmm. Do you like to be in Alabama only twice a year at your little farm, little homestead, have somebody live on it, have your chickens? That's, that's the backup plan. You see something weirds coming in the news? Fly because Alabama's more country. Yeah, you'd rather be in or you'd rather be there than Orlando. Mm-hmm. Orlando with no air conditioning, everybody's gonna be dead. Although well, Alabama's pretty hot too. It is. The South before air conditioning was not a pleasant place. The the reason so many people live in Texas now is air conditioning. I, I'm gonna ask ChatGPT this. Let's see this as we wrap up here. Okay, if one to ten million people die, where would it? What part of the U.S. would disproportionately die? What cities and states? And what? And obviously rural would have less deaths, but I'm talking about per capita. Where would be the safest place in America if power went out for 30 days? I'm telling you, it's going to be like Wyoming or my farms. Areas with disproportionate high rates, New York. New York? I figured yeah. it's going to be so. All the big cities. Hot and humid regions. Okay, I take that back. It says Alabama. Yeah, right there. (laughs) No Alabama without air conditioning. Cold regions are in winter. Yeah, Minnesota, Wisconsin, Michigan, Maine, and as is Michigan, Detroit. High crime rates. 
The best places will be Montana, Wyoming, Idaho. Well, yeah, but that's only in the summer. Wait a sec. You said Montana, Wyoming, Idaho. Those places you all freeze to death. Give me the place, the the safest three places, assuming you don't know what month it'll be. Yeah, Pacific Northwest is probably decent, but you have a lot of rain, but you'd probably be good. You know, a question I wanted to ask. We was in, yeah. I was in a barbershop the other day, and the men were talking, and it was a very open conversation. Okay. So the guys were in there and talking about swingers. You familiar with couples yeah, that swingers, are okay. in the swingers, right? And it seemed like they started acting like they was real tight. So he's like, all right, if I knew my friend was a swinger, I would not let him be my friend no more. <laughs> and then I was like, dang. So then I, I heightened the question. I took it a step further. I said, what happened if you were with your wife, you've been together nine years, kids, and then she okay. tell you she likes to have sex with multiple men at a time? Okay. They always like, divorce, divorce. Okay. How do you feel? Oh, I, I don't think most men can handle that <laughs> thought. I'm not saying it's rational, but I, I'll tell you a story. Well, I used to live in this, here in my garage house up in the Hollywood Hills, and there was a guy there. I won't say his name in case he's watching. I don't want, I'm not telling the public, but he... I guess wanted to have an open marriage. Mm -hmm. Okay, he was not a good-looking dude, and his wife was, you know, she was cute. Okay, so he goes to her, "I want to have an open relationship. We can both see other people." And she's like, "I don't want to do it. I just want to be with you." And he's like, "I." Over months, he kept nagging her. Didn't do it. Finally, she agreed. How do you think that ended? <laughs> she, he was horrible looking. I don't think he ever got another woman. <laughs> and she instantly found another dude who she's now married to and left him. He's been depressed. So the moral of the story is be careful what you wish for because you might just get it. So you got to think long and hard. I've always thought of that guy and been like, okay. But now reverse it. You don't want that. But your wife came to you and told you that this is what pleases her. If she can go out and sleep with multiple guys? Not really. She said, you know what? I want you there all the time, but I've always had a fantasy. That's one even weird. I don't want to go <laughs> So it's divorce. It's it's been, it's been like it's been a good run. <laughs> Josh said. Josh immediately goes, "I'm out." He's like, "Savannah." <laughs> Though she has headsets, his girlfriend. <laughs> yeah. He's like, <laughs> if you got a lot of testosterone, testosterone makes men territorial. That's so. What you got to do is take an estrogen shot, a lot of estrogen <laughs> shots, seriously, and you'll lower your territorial defensiveness for sure. What happened if you knew you couldn't please your woman? Most guys are like, <laughs> well, you're gonna be a, you're not gonna be pleased for the rest of your life. I don't know, man. I'm not married, so I don't know that situation. What would you do? Probably, we, it's probably be over. Yeah. Oh, so you know that doesn't seem ideal. Here's the good news for you: if you go to Orlando, you get a Puerto Rican wife. She she's probably not gonna say that to you. <laughs> they know her. Her Puerto Ricans are I'm part Puerto Rican. They, very few Puerto Rican men. No woman that's Puerto Rican, real Puerto Rican, has grown up with the thought that that's even a possibility. You know what I'm saying? So, well, good, man. So I'm going to put a link for everybody. If you want to talk credit score, best credit identity protection, I want you to put that link so I stop paying the 50 bucks. Best credit cards that you recommend that people use for travel points, The where they can reach you if they want you to help them personally. Put the link. We'll have it all there. You said you had a video on something. Mm -hmm. So we'll all put it on tylopez.com slash Lawrence. It'll be in the description below. tylopez.com slash Lawrence. That'll take you to the blog, podcast, show notes, everything about him. It'll have his Instagram on there. You know, go follow, learn. I tell people, learn from many people. Have few mentors, but you can have many advisors. So... My man, thank you for being here. Oh, yeah. All the way from the South. Thank you for having me. Yeah, thank you.